everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined by JJ Zacharyson of FanDuel. Tell me, break down the players he's buying and selling as we look toward week two. What's happening, JJ? Not too much, man. I'm glad that we finally have some data to work with after seeing these guys perform in week one. Absolutely. Everything from the preseason and then just our minds doesn't matter anymore. We have real live footage and action and data to take a look at what took place just a few days ago. But let's look toward week two. Let's begin with some of the players that you are buying here this week. And we'll start with your favorite Pittsburgh Steelers who put up a donut this past week. But you're still buying their number one wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster. I am. I mean, look, New England, we know they're they're known for taking away top options and opposing offenses. Last year, we saw Tyreek Hill in the AFC Championship only have one catch. Uh, we saw Keenan Allen in the playoffs only have two. DeAndre Hopkins had a comparable line as Juju did in week one last year. Devontae Adams only had 40 yards against them last season. So I think Juju will be just fine. Uh, the Steelers, too, you know, that secondary didn't look very strong, so they could be almost just as pass heavy this year as they were last year, or at least close to it. Maybe that regression doesn't hit as hard. Uh, and that makes Juju a really easy buy candidate who could see a lot of volume this year. Juju Smith-Schuster's not going to come off the field. You could tell he was frustrated and Ben was frustrated with how the Patriots took him out of the game. That won't happen every week. Juju Smith-Schuster is certainly someone worth buying. Continuing on, let's get to the Rams, where it was Robert Woods doing his thing with 70 yards receiving, obviously. It was Cooper Cup dominating the quantity with the amount of receptions that he had. And there was Brandon Cooks, who had two for less than 40. But you're still buying Brandon Cooks. How come? Yeah, so, I mean, look, you're, you're looking at the three wide receivers, and you're just you're just poking at the, the guy who, who had the worst stat line uh, in that game. And if you really look at the Rams, you know, last season when all three of those guys were healthy and playing a, a significant number of snaps, Brandon Cooks led the team in targets. So he's going to be involved in the offense. And if you look at their schedule, it really sets up nicely. They don't really play a formidable defense until mid-November. So Brandon Cooks in a great spot. I think he bounces back, and this whole Rams passing attack should bounce back. Rams should be better going forward. Brandon Cooks, one of the main beneficiaries of this offense. He's going to have his big games. It will be every week because you have those three wide receivers. But Brandon Cooks, he'll be all right. So don't worry on him. Let's continue on, JJ. And let's get to Tampa Bay where Mike Evans struggled opening week. It was the Chris Godwin show for the most part. But Evans was sick. It didn't seem right. You're still buying. He'll be all right, right? Yeah, I think he'll be fine. I mean, I think the, the main reason why this Buccaneers offense struggled was obviously Jameis Winston. Uh, but if you look at histor history and you look at, at what the data says, there's no correlation between interceptions thrown and plays run offensively, which means volume should still be there for Mike Evans in this offense. And, and to be honest, in, in that game against San Francisco, Mike Evans still had 114 air yards, which is about a top 20 number across the league in week one. So that usage should only go up. Hopefully Jameis uh, shows a little bit more consistency, but we know that this offense can be inconsistent with Jameis Winston, and it just so happens that one of those down games happened in week one. Jameis Winston struggles and then puts up monstrous games, and it's that inconsistency, inconsistency that you talked about. Mike Evans, well, he was the one that was hurt the most by that inconsistency. He's going to be all right. He's one of the top wide receivers in this league, and I, yeah, I'm still confident in him. Let's move on to some of the players that you were selling after week one, and that brings us first to Zach Ertz. Now, the Zach Ertz train was really split this offseason with people that thought Zach Ertz was falling for no reason and those that wanted no piece of him because of Dallas Goddard. I don't know which camp you fell into, but now you're selling. How come? Yeah, so I mean, I've been selling Zach Ertz pretty much all offseason, so I was in that camp. Uh, but if you look at what happened in week one, he did have an 18% target share. There's nothing wrong with that. Zach Ertz is going to produce for you if you drafted him, if you throw him in your tight end spot. Um, but at the same time, we shouldn't expect what he did in 2018 to happen in 2019. I'm, I'm really expecting more 2017 numbers because if you look at what happened when Golden Tate entered the, the uh, uh, joined the, the Eagles uh, last season, uh, Zach Ertz's target share dropped pretty significantly by about 7%. And then this year you have, D, you have Deshaun Jackson there. You have a healthy Alshon Jeffrey. You have Dallas Goddard an extra year in the league. So I just don't think volume is going to be Zach Ertz's friend, at least to the degree that we saw in 2018. Zach Ertz as the top tight end option in the league, probably not this season. So you're selling him at that number. Of course, given the state of tight end, he'll still be a good tight end, but maybe not giving you the value that you hoped for on draft day. One of the surprises from week one included Ronald Jones, who finally got freed for all the free Rojo guys out there. But you're not buying the impact long term. How come? 
Yeah, so I do think that he was the most impressive runner in that backfield in week one. And I, I think that he'll have some sort of role moving forward. My main fear with Ronald Jones is that he's historically struggled in pass protection and he hasn't been that much of a receiver. Even his final, uh, final collegiate season reception share was one of the lowest in the class when he was coming out. Uh, so I worry about that. And I worry that the Buccaneers are likely going to be a negative game scripts. And if that's the case, we might see Dare Gumbawale as opposed to Ronald Jones. So, you know, there are Ronald Jones truthers out there. If there's one in your league, I would just kind of dangle and see if, if they want to, uh, you know, try to buy Ronald Jones off of you and just see what you could get. Dare Gumbawale played the most snaps for the Tampa Bay Bucks, And given that negative game script that you mentioned, he could continue to be out there. Peyton Barber, the goal line back. Rojo's got to find his spot. I'm not sure what that is yet. Selling high on him this week makes a lot of sense. And then we get to the Minnesota Vikings, who dominated Atlanta. The problem for us, Kirk Cousins threw the ball 11 times total. Not good for Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. How nervous are you? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty nervous. If you look at what happened when they changed coordinators last year and Kevin Stefanski stepped in, uh, their neutral script pass to rush to temp ratio dropped significantly. And as a result, we did see Adam Thielen specifically uh, get hurt by that by, by that lack of volume. Uh, so I'm, I'm worried. I think they want to be a run first team. The defense looks good. I think they'll be able to be a run first team. And I think that, you know, as a result of that, you're going to look at Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen. They'll still be productive, but I think they might end up being more low end or mid wide receiver twos with a lot of inconsistency week to week. And that's why I think right now is the time to sell. Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs were being drafted as borderline wide receiver ones. I and mean, I know you don't want to sell anybody low, but just given the volume here, I don't think they're going to approach that value either. This is a team that, again, dominated Atlanta and threw the ball just 11 times. Sure, game script will go in their, go in their way at some point, but that is a scary, scary thought. Maybe try selling them to people that are still buying Thielen and Diggs as wide receiver ones. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. JJ, it's been a blast. Let's do it again soon. Sounds good, man. Thanks. Absolutely. Have a great night. Tomorrow, Jim Sonis will join me as we take a look at week three from a DFS perspective. Have a great night. We'll see you then.